Well, good morning, everyone. Greetings in Jesus' name. It's wonderful to um, be able to uh, share from the Word, though there's nobody um, here right now that I can speak to. Uh, it's still a blessing to be able to read Scripture and share thoughts uh, with you. So um, one thing I'll say before I start is that I just came back, my wife and Baby and I just came back from uh, Uganda uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it explains the jacket I'm wearing. I'm absolutely frozen uh, here, but other than that, we're feeling very, very happy to be here with family and with our church family, uh, fellowshipping, and uh, the thoughts that I want to share with you uh, in large part come from the blessing of fellowship, the blessing of having brothers and sisters uh, in the first place. So this is going to be a message on Galatians chapter 6, which is the last uh, chapter of the uh, letter to the Galatians. Um, it's an interesting part of the letter because it's, uh, it feels a little bit like a miscellaneous. Uh, there are tidbits and uh, different uh, words of advice here or there. Uh, not much of it actually uh, could be classified as a continuation of the themes that are explored in Galatians, uh, you know, namely law versus grace and uh, circumcision and uncircumcision, uh, the Judaizers and freedom in Christ. Uh, he mentions that a little bit at the end of chapter 6, but mostly uh, it, it feels a little bit like a miscellaneous, you know, um, patch of, of advice, and so it's very easy to overlook. Uh, the same could be said of a lot of uh, the ending of, of Paul's letters. If you look at uh, Philippians, you look at the letter to the Romans, uh, likewise, you, you almost uh, would be tempted to skip it a little bit, you know, and, and, and just focus on the main themes of, of the letter, but um, I feel like that's a big mistake. There's so much there uh, to unpack, and in many ways, uh, you could say that the conclusion of the letter is practical, but it's based off of what has been shared before uh, in, the, uh, in the previous chapters. So we're going to start here with Galatians 6, verse 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a few ch uh, sections, a few chunks of um, the chapter, and then I will just share a few comments, uh, and I hope that that works for you. So uh, this is Galatians 1 or 6, verse 1, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. I'm going to stop there. Because, um, well, I, I don't think I can unpack everything that is, that is here, but uh, it's, it's a very important passage, and um, I would say that it's, it's crucial to the Christian life. Um, what he mentions here, there's lots of doctrine being uh, expounded upon in Paul's letters. Uh, many of the themes that are dear to us at the doctrinal level come from Paul, from the Apostle Paul. Consider what we mentioned previously, grace, uh, law. Uh, consider predestination and free will. Uh, consider freedom in Christ. Consider uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in the individual and in the church. Baptism. Consider uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, think of all those themes, those, those heavy doctrinal themes, and many of them you will find in the Apostle Paul. But there is very much a pastoral side to Paul, and, and maybe it's a, it's a side that we, we can overlook sometimes a little bit uh, in favor of doctrine. In, in fact, the Apostle Peter himself kind of says that in one of his letters, doesn't he? says that, you know, uh, Paul is a very deep man, and some people use his doctrine and twist it. So it's very easy to, to use Paul as a tool uh, for, for one's own doctrinal uh, 
assertions. The problem with that, of course, is that we miss out the heart of Paul, and Paul very much has a, a heart, a pastoral heart. We see it here. Um, brethren, so he's talking to his brothers, um, if there's a, a sin, if there's a trespass, there's an addiction, there's, there's a, a difficulty with, with, with overcoming, uh, he is saying that it's very important to restore the person to take an interest in the person that would be the first step, wouldn't it be? I mean, you're hardly going to restore someone that you're not interested in. Um, you can have debates about doctrine, about politics, about a, uh, being progressive or being conservative uh, in this or that area, but that is not restoration. And I, I worry sometimes that in the Christian world, we, we do tend to equate uh, restoration and debate, um, and, and that's certainly not the case. Uh, we live in a very broken world, but you know that brokenness is in us as well. It's not just out there. In many ways, sin has broken us. Sin has made us sick uh, with many, many illnesses, and yes, there is victory in Christ, but we are recovering. We are in recovery. Sanctification is something that is uh, a, 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 an onward process, right? It's not just an event. And so to remember that, that we are broken people, very often in need of restoration, of people coming into our lives to help us. And it says here, you know, bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens implies that there are... Uh, difficulties in our lives that we cannot fix ourselves. Notice it's in the present tense. It's not just talking about when we were converted. Yes, we sinned when we were converted and before we were converted and then Christ came into our lives and made us new. Yes, for sure. But that doesn't mean that everything stops there. There are still ongoing difficulties and struggles that we face and we need to be able to share those burdens with one another. We need to be able to, to find a space where we can really deal with those things um, together corporately. I'm, I'm reminded uh, time and time again of a, uh, an amazing organization um, that was started by, actually, by Christian people uh, called Alcoholics Anonymous, and, and maybe some of you know about them. Um, they're, they're responsible for helping people, um, restoring people into the path of sobriety, uh, all over the world, millions of people have been have been helped with their 12-step program. Uh, I don't think we need a 12-step program at the church level, but certainly there are principles there um, that I have found very important and, and helpful as we consider spiritual restoration of one another um, and, and, and of sharing one another's burdens. And, and one principle that really stands out uh, to Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, it's a foundation for them, and it is this, that one cannot truly find restoration and healing from alcoholism until the person goes and finds another person broken by alcohol to bring them back to restoration and, and healing. So that's a very important principle. In order to be healed, they're saying, one must go and heal. In order to be helped, one must go and help. In order to find a space for sobriety and wholeness, one must seek to offer that for the other. And isn't that the principle of brotherhood? Isn't that bearing one another's burdens? Surely, that's, that at, at, at the core, that's, that's there. There is a warning there that Paul gives us, um, that we need to consider ourselves as we are also tempted. There is a time when too much investment in another person, whether it's emotional or, or otherwise, can end up hurting us uh, and the person themselves. So there must be boundaries, there are clear boundaries uh, there as we help each one another. Uh, but, but it does say help one another, bear one another's burdens. And it seems very important to to Paul, because he says that when we do that, that's when we're actually fulfilling the law of Christ. Um, and I, I want to say, you know, this kind of stuff is not Instagrammable, so to speak. Uh, you don't 
take pictures of yourself struggling with your brother as he is, he's faced with so many difficulties or, or your sister. Uh, you don't, you know, it's, it's not a glorious thing. Uh, it's not something that you can boast about very much to anybody. Uh, being good at doctrine, you can boast about that. Writing books and posts on, on the internet, uh, arguing in forums, you can get all kinds of praise from men. Uh, you can get that from uh, business, from having money or knowing how to make money, uh, from the relationships that you have with people, how, how sociable you tend to be, um, the house that you have, the car that you have. There are many ways in which we can uh, become quote-unquote Instagrammable, uh, you know, to be, to be seen by the world as, as important. Um, unfortunately, if that is the, the goal, the driving force behind our, our lives as Christians, uh, we're going to be very disappointed when it comes to sharing one another's burdens. Uh, it's hard work. It's very often uh, a work that, does, that goes unnoticed and is not, uh, does not bring much praise. Uh, but it's the most beautiful work because that's where Jesus is. I should move on. But I thought that was one of the most important points, uh, and so I wanted to spend time on it. Uh, I'll go on. It says, if anyone thinks himself to be something, verse 3, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in uh, another. And uh, that's something that we definitely want to, uh, to think about, to consider. Um, you know, we need to help each other, and we definitely need help from others that we just mentioned. But we still have responsibilities, and maybe that's the difference between burdens that we really are not meant to, to carry by ourselves and responsibilities and duties which we are meant to carry uh, in a way by ourselves uh, so that we can uh, be responsible and accountable for work, for something uh, that the Lord gives us. Um, it says here in verse 5, actually, for each one shall bear his own load. It seems contradictory, um, but you see the difference there between responsibility, something that you are personally accountable for, and a burden, something weighing you down, dragging you down, weakening you, and where you need the help of others uh, in order to find healing and, and help. All right. Let him, verse 6, who is taught the word, share in all good things with him who teaches. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And so it's saying here that as you give, willingly, gladly, uh, wholeheartedly, don't be worried if you don't see the evidence right here, right now. By the way, this does also apply uh, to the brother or the sister that you're trying to help out who's in deep trouble. And it may seem as you, you know, day in, day out, you struggle, you try to help the person. It doesn't seem there and then that much progress is going on. Do not worry because there is a universal law. It's, it's a universal law that you reap what you sow. And that is, you cannot avoid this law of the universe. Uh, and so sometimes that kind of scares us. But here it's actually encouraging. It's an encouraging thought. Even if you don't see it, it is in place. Whatever you reap, you will sow at some point, uh, even if you don't know the, the time or the place. Um, so take heart. Uh, if you find it difficult to, to help someone or, or even to, to get help, sometimes, sometimes that's the hard play, uh, part. Uh, how, how do you allow people to help you? Uh, sometimes, I'll be honest, I, I found that to be the hardest uh, I'll just share this with you real quick, but that's one of the things that um, unfortunately uh, made me have a, a, a breakdown. I had a, I had a, a mental breakdown uh, at one point in my life years ago um, because I took on the burdens and people tried to help me, but I didn't know, I didn't know how to let them in, how to let them help me. Uh, and I, I couldn't, one day I was, I was, I remember I, Got into a car, and then all of a sudden I had to park the car. Um, my heart rate was, was pounding, and, and I had to sit in the car, and I couldn't move. 
I couldn't do anything, and and this lasted for for several days. I, I just I was totally incapacitated. Even my mind, I couldn't think straight anymore. So it can have very dire consequences. And so I'm. If this resonates with any of you out there, uh, if you've felt that before or are beginning to feel signs of, of this, um, seek help. Please seek help. Let people into your life. Uh, you need other people. Okay. I don't want to get sidetracked here. I'll keep going. Um, it says here at verse 10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now, why would it say, especially to the household of faith? That's an odd thing to say, isn't it? Um, but really, uh, if you just say, do good to all, if you keep it in a very broad, very general uh, way, isn't it easy to, to end up doing nothing? You know, if I just say, well, I'm a lover of mankind, well, that's great. But who do you love specifically? Uh, then, then you have something to talk about. If you just say, well, I'm a citizen of the world, okay, that's fantastic. Where do you live? Uh, who's, you know, who's your neighbor? Do you know who your neighbor is, uh, even? Uh, I ask this because there were times in my life when I actually did not know who my neighbor was. Uh, so, um, very sad. But uh, I would have seen myself probably as a lover of mankind at that stage, but was I really? Uh, so, so, love has to be very specific, and, and Paul is showing us that uh, right, right there. If you want to show love, make sure you love your church, your actual church, flesh and blood, not just the YouTube pastor out there that you enjoy. Um, just putting that out there. Okay, verse 11. See what, with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. Is he saying I'm emphasis mine? I don't know. Verse 12. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that it may boast in your flesh. This is the Instagrammable stuff we were talking about. Uh, uh, and this is all throughout the Christian church. You'll find people who will try to get you uh, to uh, do things on the outward so that they can boast about you, make disciples of their own. Uh, whether it's doctrinally or in a certain practice, whatever it is, uh, it's the Judaizers of today. And, and they're rampant throughout the church. But the real work that goes on through the Holy Spirit very often is a hidden work, and it involves suffering. In fact, the, the Apostle Paul says in verse 14, it's the next verse, he says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and died to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So, the crux of the whole matter, okay, is what? It's the suffering in Christ. It's the cross of Christ. And this is the one thing that we get to boast in. And it's the hidden work, very often, of love. Love in action. With the local people, the people who are actually here now in our lives. This is what Paul is saying in chapter 6 of Galatians, the way he closes the entire letter. From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.
Yeah. No.